That the economy is in a slump is well known. But just how bad are things and what is the mood in corporate India? Although corporate India has been amongst the biggest votaries of the Modi government and there is no evidence yet that they are shifting their political loyalties. After all, like all other groups, their question too is who else is there? There are two words that perhaps sum up the mood within the private sector and corporate India. One is disenchantment with the economy and the second is a distinct sense of fear. Of course, none of the industrialists or business people will come and say this on record. Most of them agreed to talk to us only privately and off record. But this is what we've been able to piece together by talking to a series of prominent business people who represent India Inc. And this is what a lot of them have to say. First, they point to the fact that GST collections are at a 19-month low. GST collections for the last month have ended a little over 91,000 crores. This is against the budget estimate of 1.18 trillion rupees. This does not augur well for the fiscal deficit. If you couple this with the cuts in corporate tax and the fact that direct tax collections remain anemic, the government has a problem, especially when it comes to meeting deficit targets. But here's the story that one industrialist told me about GST collections. He told me that a tax official actually called him, asked to meet him personally and demanded to know why the GST deposit from his set of companies had not been the same as last year. When the industrialist tried to argue that business was not doing as well and in fact one of his ventures was close to folding, the tax official said that the department was under strong pressure to meet its required targets and in fact they were expecting the GST collections to be at least 10% higher from this particular company. This argument went nowhere and eventually the industrialist was told that it would be advisable for him to deposit a little more GST than he had last year. The tax official said that later he was free to write letters and petition the department for returns or redressal. The industrialist told me that he felt he had no option but to deposit more GST than he had last year because he was too scared of the consequences. Fear sums up the distinct mood within corporate India. The fact that the Enforcement Directorate and the CBI and tax officials are so active may be seen as a wider cleanup by the general citizen who does not come from these industries. But another industrialist told me that it has virtually not just silenced corporate India and stopped them from taking any positions on any public issues, but it has also made them deeply risk averse. This second industrialist told me that it wasn't too different in the states as it was with the center. That in both places in this era of Indian politics, they were dealing with one person strong regimes where there was very little space for public disagreement or even private argument. It was better to just fall in line and not have too much of a debate and basically maintain a low profile. This industrialist pointed to the number of prominent businesses that have shut down or are in serious trouble from Anil Ambani's companies to a Jet Airways to a Punj Lloyd. He said that the examples are obvious and there for all to see. Now, many of these industrialists are actually looking westwards. If you look at the recent uh, monetary policy report released by the RBI, not just does it paint a very, very grim picture of how banks fund release to the commercial sector is down by a whopping 88%. It also shows you that India Inc. is increasingly looking outside India for these borrowings or what is called external commercial borrowings. These borrowings, according to the latest RBI report, stand at over 1 billion rupees. The figure was minuscule for the same period just last year when you compare it to this figure. Further, this industrialist said that well beyond looking to the West for borrowings, most businesses are looking for ways, in his words, to try and see if they can in fact move their money and their business outside of India. A report released earlier this year actually shows you that 5,000 high net worth individuals of India moved abroad in the previous year. That number, this industrialist says, could be much higher this year. The overall picture that one is picking up from corporate India, like I said, is one of fear, both for themselves and about the state of the economy. 
the festive season is upon us and the government is hoping that spending and demand and commercial activity and expenditure will pick up. But the fact is that this festive season is a short period and the problems in the economy seem much more structural at this point. The Modi government so far has kept the country's attention on muscular nationalism, on decisions like Article 370 and has a media that more or less is in large parts, at least in the television sector, with the government in what it does. But the one thing that the government may not have absolute control over is which direction the economy takes. To that extent, they say that the markets remain the one institution that is from time to time still taking on the Modi government by expressing its sentiment clearly. The one chink in the armour in the Narendra Modi government remains then the economy.